TJ Dillashaw he is one of the most controversial fighters in UFC history. Either you love him or you hate him, but the bantamweight division might hate him even more after what he just admitted to. So what did he apologize for, and what was he hiding from Dana White, and how did Aljamain Sterling get such a dominant victory over the former champ? Stay tuned for all of that coming right up. First, TJ Needleshaw. In the build-up to UFC 280, TJ Dillashaw was clearly the bad guy. Since testing positive for performance-enhancing drugs before his fight with Henry Cejudo in 2019, Dillashaw has been trying to earn back his reputation. Dillashaw was famously called a snake in the grass by Conor McGregor, and that name has followed him ever since. Last year, a split decision win over Corey Sandhagen announced his return to the bantamweight division where he was once champion. He proved that after serving his sentence, he was still capable of fighting at the top. It was enough to get him a title shot against Aljamain Sterling, and he had a lot of work to do. Sterling is on a seven-fight win streak and hasn't been beaten since 2017, but the battle wasn't only only in the octagon, TJ was fighting for support. Fans online were calling him Needleshaw, and Sterling got in on the action too, commenting that it was a little fishy about the fact that Dillashaw wasn't appearing in any of the UFC's embedded pre-fight docuseries. The theory was that he was hiding part of his training camp because he was up to his old tricks. Dillashaw's response was to embrace the role of the bad guy. He said to Sterling, you're gonna get your ass whipped by a cheater, how do you feel about that? When the lights came on at UFC 280 though, Dillashaw didn't have an answer for one of the most dominant performances from Sterling that we've ever seen. Next, Aljamain Sterling's next opponent. Dillashaw and Sterling wasn't the only big fight at UFC 280. Peter Yan and Sean O'Malley were facing off to settle who would fight next for the bantamweight championship. Peter Yan has already lost to Sterling twice, and he was hoping the third time would be the charm, but he was denied that chance after a shocking split decision lost to O'Malley. The bout was undeniably a close call. Yan looked to be in the driver's seat at times throughout the fight, with strong takedowns, striking, and some grueling ground and pound, but O'Malley had plenty of flashy strikes of his own. After the final bell, Peter Yan raised his arms in victory before the judges handed the win to O'Malley, who has described himself as the next Conor McGregor in the sport. Clearly, Yan wasn't happy with the decision. On Twitter after the fight, he had a short message writing F the judges. Former lightweight champion Khabib Nurmagomedov didn't agree either. Reacting to the outcome, he asked, how is this possible? But the statistics show how close of a contest it was. O'Malley landed 84 significant strikes compared to Yan's 58, while well, Yan did win in terms of takedowns and ground control, so it came down to how valuable the judges thought striking was compared to ground control. Unfortunately, we're unlikely to see a rematch anytime soon. It's more likely that O'Malley will be pitted against Aljamain Sterling in the first title fight of his career. Sterling is still the champion. So, how did Aljamain Sterling earn the win over TJ Dillashaw? Looking to defend his title for a second time, Sterling came out strong. As soon as the fight started, he was hitting Dillashaw with strikes as the two felt each other out. Dillashaw had been trash-talking about Sterling's stand-up game in the build-up to the fight, and early on it looked like we might get to see more striking than we normally see from Sterling. But it took less than 20 seconds for all of that to change. The champion quickly landed a winding takedown that left TJ on his back and the champ in full control, showing the strong wrestling that has propelled him to the top of the rankings. Sterling welcomed Dillashaw back to the championship fighting with a few brutal punches while the contender scrambled to escape. Sterling locked his legs together to fully control Dillashaw and almost ended the fight right there and then. Somehow, Dillashaw survived the ground and pound, plus a couple of submission attempts, but he couldn't do much more than weather the storm. The second round went much the same, with TJ ending up on his back and getting absolutely mauled by Sterling. Finally, the referee stepped in and called an end to the fight. It extends Sterling's win streak to 8 and puts him at number 7 in the pound-for-pound -pound rankings. He will be heading into his next title fight as a heavy favorite too. Up next, why is Dana White not happy with TJ Dillashaw, and why did Francis Ngannou gain a new respect for him? So don't go anywhere. Dillashaw was fighting with an injury. TJ Dillashaw has now admitted that he came into the fight at a huge disadvantage, but it's how he's blocked the division that is causing so much anger from fans. Within the first 20 seconds of the first round, Dillashaw's shoulder was dislocated. Somehow, he managed to see out the rest of the round and have it pop back in by his team, but from then on, it was only a question of limiting the damage. There was no point where it looked like TJ might cause an upset and regain his championship belt. That's why others have been critical of his performance, and it gets worse. Dillashaw admitted that it's a problem he's been having for over six months. Speaking in his post-fight interview, he said that it first happened in April and that his shoulder had popped out at least 20 times during his training camp. Dillashaw said that it was the toughest training camp he'd ever been through and that he even notified the referee before the fight so that it wouldn't be ended early. He also said that trash-talking Sterling's stand-up game was an attempt to bait the champion.
champion into staying off the ground. It clearly didn't work. And now Dillashaw has apologized to the division for taking up a position because he didn't want to wait another year. Dana White first learned about the injury when everyone else did, and he said that he might not have let the fight go ahead if he knew earlier. But Dillashaw didn't inform the UFC, and it's not the first time Dillashaw has failed to disclose something. Next, no mercy from MMA pros. When Dillashaw tried to pop his shoulder back in, Sterling's corner shouted to him, no mercy. And Dillashaw didn't get much mercy online either. A number of MMA pros were more than happy to see Dillashaw suffer a brutal loss. Fellow bantamweight Ricky Simone, who is number 10 in the division, tweeted out, Juicehead's body not holding up, and plenty of other fighters had the same opinion. Middleweight Chris Curtis said that EPO looks like it has weakened TJ structurally, but he didn't have any sympathy because he did it to himself. Meanwhile, others had a little more compassion. Former champion and Dillashaw rival Dominic Cruz said it was no fun to be on your back against a fighter like Aljamain Sterling. Others called Dillashaw a gangster, with heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou giving him respect for even stepping into the octagon. Apart from sporadic support though, the majority of responses were pretty pleased about watching Dillashaw's downfall. Everyone likes to see the good guy win. But Dillashaw is a tough cookie. You can call TJ a cheat, but it's hard to deny how tough he is. Even with the dislocated shoulder, he went head to head with the strongest bantamweight on the planet. Dillashaw actually dislocated his shoulder twice during the short two round fight, which he was trying his best to manage. Online, half of the fans praised Dillashaw for how tough he was, while the other half thought he had stolen another contender's opportunity. It wasn't the first time he suffered a serious injury during a fight either. In his most recent fight last year against Corey Sanhagen, Dillashaw tore his knee in the first round. It didn't stop him from winning the five-round slugfest, but it took two surgeries to fix, and he revealed that each time he tried to ease his way back into training, it would just make the injury worse. And while the road back to the top is tough, Dillashaw wouldn't have it any other way. He said, I I really do love to do this. When you walk out there, the fear you have when competing, you come alive. The time he spent out of action meant that Sandhagen took his place in a championship bout with Aljamain Sterling. Dillashaw had to watch from the sidelines as Sterling took just one round to beat Sandhagen. Instead, he had to wait until UFC 280, where under the Abu Dhabi lights, Dillashaw's physical weaknesses were ruthlessly exploited by Aljamain Sterling. Many fans will be happy with how the fight turned out, but a prime TJ Dillashaw against a prime Aljamain Sterling would have been even more entertaining. Who do you think Aljamain Sterling should fight next? And is this the end of TJ Dillashaw's career? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.